So today we're welcoming Babesh, who works at Google and has a fantastic job. Um, and I will just let him kind of introduce his own story. Babesh, the floor is yours. Uh, yeah, so my name is Babesh, as Alex uh, mentioned. Um, in terms of uh, my background, um, so I'll start with my education background. Um, so I got my bachelor's in computer engineering from India. Uh, this was back from 2000 to 2004. Um, I did a year's worth of work uh, at a company uh, in India, and then I moved uh, to US in 2005 uh, to do my master's. Uh, so I completed my master's from uh, Northeastern University, which is in Boston. While I was in the university, uh, I did my co-op, which is like an extended internship, eight month internship at a local company called as uh, EMC. Um, EMC, uh, to give you a debrief, they work uh, in data storage. Um, so whenever we store something, uh, it needs to be put on a hard drive. Um, in your computer, you have one hard drive, but in bigger companies, you need more hard drives. So EMC's job was to give companies cupboard full of hard drives uh, and management software that goes along with it. So I did that for eight months, uh, went back to university, uh, completed my uh, course and um, in my last semester I got hired again at EMC for a full-time uh, job. EMC got acquired by many other companies uh, as time went on and my role went from one role to another. Um, so the different types of roles that I did uh, at EMC were of a software engineer, a quality engineer, um, customer manager and eventually I was a, a director of engineering where we uh, worked on customer issues on a 24 by 7, 365 basis. This year I got hired at Google. Uh, at Google, my uh, role is uh, management related. Uh, I'm a technical program manager at Google. Um, Eleanor asked, what does a brief workday look like for you? So I wake up at about seven. Uh, from seven, I start thinking about um, what is it that I should do today? And I have a brief mental map uh, about that. By nine o'clock, I log in. Um, check all the emails um, that might have come in the evening or we have teams in other uh, geos so when it's my night it's their day so they can send notes on uh, chat uh, once those are done uh, I take a quick look at my calendar see what meetings uh, exist um, and what do I do need to do uh, if anything for those meetings um, set those things up um, if there is any low hanging fruit, what low hanging fruit means is if there's anything that I can do in five or 10 minutes, um, I do that. So this would take me at about 10 o'clock. And after that, uh, these long-term planning things, uh, which are ongoing programs, um, they get started. What that means is, right, um, I, there is a planner, uh, just like you have a planner uh, in, most folks should have a planner. Um, we have a software planner. Uh, which actually shows me uh, these are the things that we were we are supposed to do and this is the timeline this is the owner um, and take a look at that um, most of the times I need to check back with the owner to see how they are doing with that task are there any risks uh, of those tasks not getting completed um, there are things that I will not be able to get to uh, so I write those down as tasks for the next day um, so that's like tactically what a day looks like uh, from a strategic perspective. Uh, uh, there are certain goals that we have to think about uh, on a quarter basis, quarter meaning three months or a yearly basis. Um, so whatever tasks that I do on a uh, on a day to day basis, those are aligned to those. Meaning uh, if I look at Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and the day of the week, the, the tasks that I do should roughly enable those quarterly or yearly goals to be successful. Uh, maybe I need more clarity. Why would a ditch get in the way of your work exactly? Like what exactly is the risk assessment there? As an example, right, we are working with a company um, to review some of our uh, people's work to make sure there are uh, no problems in that work. So basically a review of the code and design and so on and so forth. Um, while they are doing review of, let, there are 10 pieces to review, while they are doing review of three pieces, the other seven pieces are still being made. Now, uh, last week uh, it turned out that one of the pieces will not be ready in time because the person hasn't uh, 
for this conversation the person hasn't started working on it so that's a ditch now if i ignore that ditch uh, next week the the partner team will say hey can you give me that piece of work to review but we don't have that piece of work so this this week i should tell the partner team saying that hey fyi that fourth item is not going to be ready by next week so ignore that uh, and start planning to review item number 5 6 and 7 rather than 4 5 and 6 so those type of uh, uh, ditches as an immigrant to this country like have you ever faced any cultural norms that have come across kind of off putting especially like as working at google um, how has it been to transition into this country, especially as far as like getting your master's degree here? Um, what have you learned? What could students take away? That's a huge question, but feel free to break it down however you'd like. So back at, back in India, right, the cultural norm is you can't question a teacher. So if a teacher is teaching something, whatever they are saying is the truth. Uh, you can't ask questions. You can't ask clarifying questions. Um, because you respect the teacher. So when I came here, the first month, month to two months were like that, where uh, I was very reserved. Like you, I was using the same philosophy of, hey, I can't question the teacher. The teacher knows everything. But uh, I was seeing other students uh, asking questions to the teacher. So I also started questioning the teacher. And after a few more months, that became the norm. Um, the other item was the education in US, especially grad school, is very practical based. It's the questions that you'll get in an exam or in a project are going to be quantitative based questions. So practical questions that you will see in day to day work. Uh, you will be doing that in grad school. In terms of uh, cultural items, um, so I come from a metro city in India. So uh, culturally, I didn't have to adapt as much. Uh, it's very similar in terms of uh, lifestyle. The work culture at Google is very fast, fast paced. Um, people are very accommodating. You can ask questions to them. If I have a question on something, I can ask them. Uh, and if I don't understand, I can ask them further. Um, so that has been very uh, helpful uh, for me at Google. That's good to hear. Um, I could imagine coming into this country also and also working at Google. Like you said, you think a lot of people are smarter than you. Uh, you might have dealt with imposter syndrome. We talked a little bit uh, about this before the students got admitted, but I'd, I'd love to hear your perspective on imposter syndrome um, in technology in general, and then how you personally overcame it, or if you still struggle with it today, um, what some solutions for students might be. Um, when I first started at EMC, I was struggling with it because I I felt like there's no way I'll ever reach to a proficiency level uh, that my seniors were in. So if there was a senior engineer and I was a junior engineer, I felt like I would never reach there. And after a few years, few years, I became the senior engineer. And suddenly junior engineers were approaching me with problems. And that was for us for a six months year. That was nerve wracking because I was like, I can barely take care of myself. How can I take care of these other folks? Um, but as time went on, uh, I got good mentoring and coaching from my then mentors, uh, which I really took to heart and uh, that helped me out. Uh, with technology, one of the things is uh, technology keeps changing. Um, things keep uh, moving ahead. In terms of imposter syndrome, um, what I tell myself is if, if, if I can be disciplined and persistent enough to learn the past technology, back in 2007, I can always use the same principles here, the persistence and the discipline that is needed. Given that you are an immigrant to the United States, have you ever encountered institutional racism, um, especially in your career? And how have you dealt with that? Um, how have you overcame it? Overcome it, sorry. <laughs> yeah, fortunately, haven't encountered racism. The IT sector, right, uh, is very multicultural uh, and everybody's welcome. I have, we have friends who are Asian, friends who are African-American, friends who are white, uh, colleagues who are like that. Um, the, the thing that binds all the people together is, right, we are working on a problem and we have to work collectively to come towards a solution. So that sort of brings teams together, uh, brings people together, and there is no room for me to uh, get uh, racism from others or for me to express racism towards others. Um, Bavesh, thank you for being here. Thank you for opening up about your experience. I definitely asked you the hard questions, so thank you so much for answering those.